Hello everybody. My name is Jeff and I'm here to talk about cameras. Again, this is only my second video. And as you can see, if you've seen my first video, I have gone to landscape mode. <laughs> Presently shooting on my iPhone 13 Pro. Also, I have a DJI mic set up, as you can see right here. Very nice little units. You can put a uh, lavalier mic in here if you want or something of that nature, but this works out just fine. They have a nice little package. Uh, you know, you, get, you can get two of these, you know, if there's uh, two people. Uh, basically, they give you all the uh, clip-on hardware, so this, the receiver is uh, right in the lightning port of the uh, 13 Pro right now. And, of course, it has the uh, hot shoe attachment as well. It's own charging case. Uh, great little unit. Got it from uh, B&H Photo, which uh, I think is one of the best photo houses around. And, again, I don't get paid by anybody to endorse or what have you. I just tell you where I got, you know, these items from. The one thing I like about B&H is uh, very fast delivery, and most of the time there's no charge which is kind of unusual, but very welcome. So, photos, cameras. I do that as a hobby. I'm not a professional by any means. I do take pride in the pictures I take. I try and compose and, you know, use the histogram or, you know, various settings to make sure I have the right exposure. You know, a lot of it is in the eye of the photographer. You know, if you're if you're pleased with what you which you know with what you take, you know that's all you need. You know, I do put up on Instagram as well. Uh, my Instagram handle is J S W C A T one. If you like to take a look at some of the stuff I do, you know, I I call myself a documentarian, but I do the odd sports. I do you know the kiteboarding, which I'm basically just a five minute walk from Miami Beach right now. I, I like doing golf tournaments, uh, just did soccer yesterday. But I, you know, I like just capturing things with the camera, which I think a lot of you do as well. Also, uh, I call it urban wildlife, anything I see when I'm walking around. And of course, we do have some unusual wildlife here. Some of it is indigenous, some is not, which is uh, <clears throat> like our little iguanas. They're not little, some of them are pretty big. But we have all sorts of birds, uh, pelicans, that type of thing. I like taking pictures of those as well. But enough about me. So, cameras. My first video I made when I had the Sony RX10 Mark IV. And uh, did I say had? Yes, hopefully I did because I sold it. Great camera, but there was, I believe, three things that I needed in a camera that I didn't get in the RX-10 Mark IV. Great camera, one way or the other. I mean, you know, nice carry around camera, especially when I walk between four to six miles a day. Sometimes I go up to 10. I walk to Miami and back, believe it or not. I just like walking. I'm a fool. Maybe not a fool, but it's good exercise. So I always wanted something that I could carry very easily. And I've been through all the brands, not all of them, but most of the heavy, heavy hitters. Sony, I had the A7 III. Uh, I pointed this out in my, my previous video, but I'm just going to go through it again. I had the uh, Nikon D500, Nikon D850, Nikon Z7. Uh, had the Canon R6 when it first came out. You know, with various other lenses, uh, you know, accompaniments and what have you. The thing with full frame is the bodies themselves are going to be somewhat expensive, but the lenses, if you want good glass, because I always hear from everybody, you have to have good glass, okay, uh, you know, to take the pictures that you like, if you want to, you know, have some exceptional clarity, but also, you know, a lower F number, which allows more light into the camera, so you can have faster shutter speeds, you know, more bokeh, or bokeh, however you want to pronounce it, which means the blurriness in the background, you know, if you're doing 
uh, portraiture or just taking pictures of anything where you want to blur out the background so there's more focus on the item or the person you're taking a picture of. But like it, it gets very expensive and gets heavy, okay, very heavy. That's why I like the RX-10 Mark IV. I believe it was one a 24 to 600 built-in lens, could be a 20 to 600, either way. You had a, a good wide angle to a good telephoto length in the, what they call a bridge camera. <clears throat> and very easy to carry around, you know. It wasn't light light, but it was lighter than most cameras, okay. And some of you might just use your, you know, your uh, smartphone, you know, your smartphone camera. I mean, uh, with the computational photography that is out now, there's very little that you can't do with it. The one thing you can't do is get the telephoto advantage you get with an interchangeable or a camera that has a built-in zoom. Even though some of them do zoom, the clarity is like, eh, not too good. So the reason for the RX-10's sale was, number one, the zoom does not operate when you're taking pictures, meaning you can't alter it at the same time you're taking a shot which is somewhat problematic, especially when you're, you know, you're doing fast-moving sports, you know, as in kiteboarding or, or soccer, not golf, you know, essentially, but when you can have that manual zoom, you know, and you're holding the camera and you can just sort of like tweak it back and forth so you can, you know, frame properly while keeping the autofocus on as a, you know, as an example, which kind of, I could have get around it a little bit, but it was, you know, it was kind of bothersome. Number two was the single battery. Again, not a big thing, but you know, if you forget the battery, the second battery at home, you don't bring it with you, and you know, you get that little icon that starts going red that says, "Ah, your battery's about to run out." <laughs> not good if you're not close to home. So that was uh, not a big thing, but it was there. Third thing was one. SD card slot. Just one, not two, just one. And again, I've never had a problem with SD cards, you know, as far as any malfunction or, you know, not reading correctly. But I, I have heard, and there's photographers that have had that problem. So, again, not a big thing, but just something that, you know, you have to think about. Now, most people can be very satisfied with the Sony RX10 Mark IV. I was up to a point, but something changed my mind when it became available at what I thought was a steal of a price. More on that later. So what changed my mind and what did I find that was somewhat irresistible. As I've said, I've been through a lot of camera brands, but I wanted to keep it, let's say minimal as far as the weight that I would have to carry around. Because I said, I do, you know, walk quite a bit. Let me show you what I found. Everything that's in this bag right here, okay? This is a little Tenba, I think it's a 12, 12 liter bag. You got, you know, a little bit of storage in the front, a couple pockets and stuff. But the nice thing about it is, when you flip it over, move the shoulder straps out of the way, you have a little waist belt as well. The back opens up. What you can do, even if, you know, you have the belt attachment around your waist, you can take your camera gear out right in front of you, right? And everything that I'm going to show you fits in this bag. Like I say, very thin, lighter than anything else you're going to carry around if you have, you know, a body with interchangeable lenses, believe me. So let me... Put this down here. 
And this is what I purchased. And I'm going to take off the uh, Peak Design wrist strap. That's all I carry. I don't have a you know camera strap around my neck. I just felt that was I don't know, just irritating. So this wrist strap is nice. You know, keeps it adhered to the wrist. Well, let me let me demonstrate it for you. Just click it on. Got a little black attachment here at the bottom, which I got from uh, Peak Design as well. You just put old Mr. Wrist through that. Boom. And there you go. Sometimes I just, you know, carry it with two fingers. If, it, if anything happens, you know, it's, it's going to be secure. Hopefully I don't fall down with the camera in my hand, but, you know, I can't do much about that. But let's get to the camera, okay? Enough about the wrist strap. Let's take that bad boy off. Very easy. So, Olympus OMD EM1X. It's a lot of letters, numbers, maybe one number. Reason I got this camera, it solved the problems I had with the Sony RX10 Mark IV. One, it's interchangeable lens. So there's no electric zoom. They're all manual zoom if you do get a zoom. Two, batteries. Two, in a very thin design. So unless you're shooting a lot, I mean, probably 3,000 pictures you can get off of this. I don't do a lot of video, but peace of mind right there. It's all, it's all here. And dual SD cards, okay? And they're the UHS-2 cards because the read and write speed is a lot better and this camera is designed for it. So you do have redundancy in case one card fails, you know, the other one will automatically back it up, or if you fill up one card, the other one is there as well. Or you can shoot photos to one, movies to the other, whatever you want to do. But I just love everything built in, and it fits my hand perfectly. I don't have big hands, but uh, I guess I have thick fingers or whatever, but man, it just oh, feels so good. Portrait mode, all the buttons are exactly the same either way. Okay, the only one missing in the portraiture is the little red video button, which you're not going to use in portraiture anyway. You know, you're all almost always going to be in landscape. If anything, you can just, of course, click it on and just move the camera. A lot of customizable buttons out here, more than any camera I've ever had. Okay, and I've had a lot of them. You do have the little flippy out screen, okay, which I found to be nice, which wasn't on the RX-10 Mark IV. You know, sometimes you want to do overhead shots, okay, or you get low to the ground and you want to, you know, flip it out and get that low angle. You know, I just, I didn't know how much I missed that, but I, I kind of did. And the nice thing about this is that, you know, of course you have the, the side here. Let me turn it on. Woo, there it is. But well, you can always flip it around, okay? And you have that hardback, so you're protecting the screen. There's a lot of cameras, you know. I don't believe, I may be wrong, but I don't believe any of the higher end cameras, Sony A1, Canon R3, Nikon Z9, have that hardback. It's always exposed. I just kind of like that. That's just me. Other advantages of the OMD EM1X, it's basically extremely water resistant. They say it has an IP1X rating, whatever that means. But I've seen video where they have water pouring down on it. They actually have it in, a, in the middle of this circular sheath of water and there's just stuff pouring, I mean, coming in at a pretty good pressure on all sides of this, I mean, basically, 
you almost could call it waterproof. Of course, you don't want to take it under the water. But uh, when you're outside a lot, that's, that's a pretty important feature to have. And most of the pro lenses, which they have, you know, regular lenses and pro lenses, most of those pro lenses are the same way. So, I mean, you really don't have to worry about much. Just wipe the lenses and you're, you know, you're good to go. You know, magnesium body, it's got its own heat sink built in. Um, some of the other features, which I like, GPS, because I always have to use an app with the other, you know, with the other cameras. GPS is built in. <laughs> Here's something else, which is, uh, I mean, it's kind of weird. They have a logging feature where you can have altitude, temperature, and compass built into the camera. I mean, who does that? <laughs> it's just unbelievable. But everything, you know, the buttons are very tactile. You got two in the landscape and two, of course, in the portrait. Again, the same buttons either way, one or the other. I just find it to be a, a nice unit. Now, the reason I bought it, okay? The features that I liked were, were on here that I was missing from the Sony RX10. It is a, you know, micro four thirds, so it's a four thirds sensor, but it's 45% bigger than the one inch on the Sony RX10. Now one inch doesn't mean one inch square, rectangular, whatever. It's a figure of speech, just like full frame or 35 millimeter. You can uh, go on the web and see all the different sizes of the sensors on, you know, on everything, all the way up to, uh, you know, Pentax, you know, six by four, or Hasselblad, you know, in the square format. Of course, some of those aren't as big as they used to be either in the film format, but the bigger the sensor, bigger the weight, the more you have to carry around. So it's just a, it's just a nice ergonomic, easy to carry camera to have. When this was brand new, a little over three years ago, it was $3,000 for the body. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I probably would never have bought it back then for that amount of money, okay? Uh, but I found one used through Robert's camera, I think it's in Indianapolis, Indiana. And again, I'm not getting paid, you know, to endorse them or whatever. I'm just telling you where I got the camera from. And their site, which is different from their main site, is called Used Photo Pro, I believe. And I was very curious, you know, when I was watching videos of this camera, because they did have it uh, marked down to $1,700, brand new. I was going like, damn. What's the deal? Anyway, Robert's had one. They hit, I think it was, they call it the Mint Minus was their classification, which is almost like 99% brand new. Had like, I don't know, 1,500 actua actuations. Actuations. And uh, still had the box, all the stuff. It, it comes with dual battery chargers. They're both single, but you know, they give you two in there as well. And I got it for uh, right around a grand. I'm going like, holy man, that, that sounds like a good deal for all the stuff you get in this camera. The biggest thing on Micro Four Thirds is lenses. So I got three. This one I got used as well through uh, Robert's camera or use Photo Pro. It's a 20 millimeter, 1.4, okay, lets in a lot of light. But in Micro Four Thirds language, it's 20 millimeter, but if you're looking at full frame equivalency, that's 40 millimeter. So it gives you a nice, you know, carry around lens. Again, very weather sealed. Excellent little lens to have with the camera. And I'm just pulling all this out of that bag, by the way. The 10 by 12, 12 liter bag. Next one up is the Olympus 40 to 150, okay, which is a fixed f2.8. Now that's a big deal because fixed 2.8 lets in a lot of light and it doesn't go up to 4 or you know 5.6 or whatever I mean it will if you want to adjust the aperture, but it's a fixed 2.8 Okay, pretty big 72 millimeter front lens it Has a few features on it that, which are really nice as well <laughs> I just love this 
Lenza just pops right up. You got like a little spring-loaded deal which releases it. I just thought that is neat. Okay, just, it just, I don't know, that's wild. That's just me. But on this lens, you just pull this down and you're in manual mode automatically. And then you just turn it. Okay, your, your, your uh, zoom is right here at the bottom. It's got a nice, not loose, okay, just a nice smooth feel to it. Then, of course, you got your, your focus right up here. If you don't want manual, just pop it back up. It automatically goes back to autofocus in the camera. And you can take this off if you don't want to use it. The little tripod mount. Sometimes I leave it on. Sometimes I take it off. But it, it's nice when you want to carry it like this with the camera on the other end. You know, that way you're not stressing the, uh, you know, the coupling to the camera. It'll probably take it anyway because it's magnesium body. I mean, it's, it's a tough, tough, tough body. But I kind of like carrying with that little, that little tripod mount. So 40 to 150, of course, in full frame equivalency is at 80 to 300. So I got a 40, I got an 80 to 300. And I'll bring out the other one. And again, I shoot a lot of sports, wildlife, that type of thing. Oh, I paid full price for that. Well, it actually was discounted to $1,200. I think it was regularly $1,499. Yeah. Same thing with this I bought used, which is a 300 millimeter F4. Okay. For 300 millimeter, that's a lot of light to let in. And of course, you got the obligatory switches, you know, the, the length that you wanted to uh, focus in, three different positions, IS which is your stabilization and a customizable button. Also, built-in lens hood. Just turn it like that, done. So you don't have to worry about, you know, lens hoods, you gotta twist them around or whatever. Boom, ready to go. And also, the same little, let me get it here. The same little manual focusing thing right here, okay? Of course, this has one ring because it's fixed. It's not a zoom. And then if you don't want to use the manual, just, just like that. Some people that I, I watch some of their videos say, oh, I, you know, I didn't know that, you know, the manual was on or what. I'm, you always know the manual is on if you're looking through the viewfinder. Because if you put this down and you have the magnifier in the camera set up so you can get that, that sharp focus, I mean, it's there. How can you miss that? Anyway, maybe they didn't have it set up, but I, I just find this very useful, especially when you're shooting like, uh, you know, birds that are obscured by branches or what have you, and you can't get that auto focus point in there in the right, you know, in that right little area. You just pull this down, you get that magnification, zoom in on the head or the eye, boom, ready to roll. Now, most of you, if you know the full frame cameras and you're looking at a 300 F4, oh, excuse me, <laughs> full frame equivalency, 600 F4, that sucker would be like this, no lie, and, you know, at least twice the weight, if not close to it, maybe, you know, quite, quite big around as well, because you have a larger sensor, so yes, <laughs> 600 F4, that's what this is, believe it or not, and Perfect carry weight. I mean, it, it's a little heavy, but I mean, it's not like 600 F4 Nikon, Canon, or Sony heavy, for sure. So like I say, weather sealed, easy to carry around. You know, it's just, it just fits me to a T. And I also got the Olympus uh, 1.4 teleconverter. Got it used through uh, B&H Photo, which I love B&H Photo. You know, almost free shipping most of the time. And uh, very fast, very fast delivery. But both the 40 to 150 and the 300 use this in conjunction, so it makes the 40 to 40 to uh, 150, of course, an 80 to 300, then times 1.4. So at the max length, it's a 420. It cuts down the aperture from 2.8 to 4. And of course, when I put it on the 300, AKA 
600 makes it an 840. And F stock would be 5.6 from 4. But just, again, nice little thing to have. I didn't go with the, uh, the two times because that would have cut it more light down, you know, another stop. And from what, I, from what I read, and I think this is true with most manufacturers or most cameras, this, this works very well, keeps very, very sharp as well as far as, you know, photographs are concerned. And I think this is one of the best things you can get if you want to extend that focal length. So I'll go into more of the uh, finer points of the uh, OMD EM1X at a later date because there's so many features on that camera. Uh, I'm just thrilled by it. And especially for, you know, the price you can buy them at now used. If you can find a nice used one that's barely used and some lenses. Oh, speaking of, I forgot to tell you the price I got this lens for. This is the 300. I found it on eBay. Brand new, they're expensive. They're three grand. Yeah, it's a lot. Got it for uh, $1,450. And the thing was like brand new. And the guy didn't have the box or the bag it came in, but you know, who's going to use that anyway? But yeah, half price. It's, I mean, just unbelievable. But anyway, <laughs> sorry to uh, digress, but I'll go into some of the features of this camera, you know, at a later date, but uh, I just wanted to let you know my reasons for selling the Sony RX10 and going to the Olympus OMD EM1X. Hope you're having a great day, and I will talk to you later. Stay safe.